Good morning. You warmly welcome to St. Michael Online Service. My name is Timmy Ajayi. I'm the curate. I'm really glad that uh, you're able to join us as we worship God together this morning. For our service today, uh, Joanna Ramsey will be sharing with us her journey of faith. Also, we've got uh, a special appearance by uh, a very wise man called Ekaya. Ekaya will be sharing with us some words of wisdom from the Old Testament book of Esther. I'm sure we're all looking forward to that. Shall we begin our service as we say together the words of introduction that should come up on your screen now? Please respond uh, with the beaten board. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For I have hoped all day long. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and brought very low. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I put my trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. Free us, God of mercy, from all that keeps us from you. We leave the misery of, and of the anxious and the ashamed, and fill us with the hope of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our first song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Hi everybody, it's Marion here to do the notices. It's great to be with you. And of course, I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who's been involved in the service this week. Thank you very much. Now, following on from the Archbishop's encouragement to, for us all to pray at 6 p.m. each day during lockdown for people who are isolated and feel lonely, 
We're um, also going to have a weekly prayer meeting now on Thursdays. So that's weekly on Thursdays on Zoom, obviously, um, at 8.15 p.m. Uh, for 45 minutes. So it will be lovely if you can join us. Now, coming up this week, um, it's the fantastic SMAG Art Gallery that starts tomorrow um, online. So do have a look um, at all that local affordable art and their um, website is that. So um, do have a look yourself and tell people uh, about it. That would be great. And also this week, we're starting our food bank collections again. So that's on Tuesdays, 10 till 11.30 in church. And um, alongside that, we're going to have um, a donations table, which will have jams and preserves and a few cards, things like that, which people can make donations for. And all the money raised will go um, to the food bank. So I think that'll be really, really um, you know, great thing to do. Now, Advent is approaching. So that means obviously we all need one of these. So this is a, an Advent calendar which tells the story of Christmas. So it's three ninety nine, and um, Carolyn has taken orders. So um, if you want one, do get in touch with Carolyn. And it comes from the activity book and uh, fair trade chocolate. What's not to like? So um, do have a think about that. So I think that's all for me actually this week. Um, of course, if you want to contact us, uh, that's the email to use. That would be great. So um, now I'm going to hand over to Joanna Ramsey, who's going to tell us about her journey of faith. So I'll look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye for now. Hello, my name is Joanna. I'm a member of the 1030 congregation at St Michael's, and I'm very briefly going to share a bit of my journey of faith with you. So growing up, I would have always said I was a Christian, but I think looking back, it was about trying very hard to be good. Then I remember going to a session at our church and the speaker explained how the whole world revolves around God and his glory. And this made so much sense to me, it's like something clicked. And I realized that I'd been living as if the whole world should revolve around me. And that hadn't really worked, I couldn't do it. I wasn't good enough um, or consistent enough to do the things I wanted to do. Um, and also I wasn't worthy enough of the kind of praise and glory I was trying to get for myself. And it's such a relief to realise that there was someone who was worthy of that and that that was God. And I think the Holy Spirit really worked in my heart through that whole um, session. And um, I remember going home afterwards and I was reading the Bible. And I'd read the Bible quite a lot before I'm a keen reader, but before it had always been a task, something to do that would... Uh, make me feel good about myself and proud and now it was a totally different experience. I read the Bible and it was this wonderful gift that um, God speaks to us and reveals himself to us and also I was freed from scanning the lines looking for things about myself or what I needed to do and realised that there's so much in those pages about God and his character and his world and his plans. So it's just a totally different experience. Another key moment probably in my journey of faith would be my last year of university. So I studied French, had a year abroad, um, came back and then really struggled in that last year. Most of my friends had graduated so I felt quite lonely at times and I also struggled to get back into the routine of the academics. And it was a year where I really had to cling to Jesus and trust in him. I could no longer uh, ground my worth or my, my identity in how popular I was or how clever I was. But instead I had to really find my identity, my worth, my hope, my security in Jesus. Um, so that was a hard year, but actually a year of great growth, I think. There have obviously been lots of other moments and I love the way that God um, shapes and um, transforms each of us. Um, but a verse that I often come back to is Hebrews 12 too. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Um, I love the way that this reminds us uh, that we just need to look to Jesus and we find our, our true and solid hope in him. And we don't look to ourselves or to other things around him, but we keep our eyes fixed on him.
lots of people were having sore ears. So I had to go to the doctors to get my ears checked too. But I was really scared. I thought, they're going to cut my ears off. <gasps> and did they? No. <laughs> the doctor said he didn't have to do that to look in my ears. He checked them and they were fine. Oh, that's really good. Mum told me how brave you were. But that's not all. No? Yeah, I was really brave at the park this week too. Were you? Why? What happened at the park? Well, Ryan and Sharon were climbing. <laughs> Yes, and what happened to Ryan? <laughs> Sharon! Well, they were climbing up a tree, and all of a sudden, Ryan slipped down <gasps> and he really banged his head. Oh no! That sounds terrible! It is! And lots of adults came over and were trying to help. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to pray for Ryan in front of all those adults. That's so brave. Wow. That reminds me of the story we're going to hear today about Esther. You see, she was really brave in front of lots of important people. Shall we listen to the story? Yeah, that sounds great. Great, I can't wait. Bye everyone! Bye! We now come to our time of confession. Shall we take a moment of silence to acknowledge our wrongdoings before God? For our words of confession this morning, when I say, Father, forgive us, please respond at home by saying, save us and help us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you father forgive us save us and help us for failing you by what we do and think and say father forgive us save us and help us for letting ourselves to be drawn away from you by temptations in this world about us father forgive us save us and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son father forgive us save us and help us May the god of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins draw us to himself and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in christ our lord amen one of the beauty of uh, one of the beauties of online services during uh, during the lockdown is that there are no restrictions on singing, so you can sing as loud as you want at home. Uh, so please join in in the words of our next song, all through history.
David fought Goliath and he won. A humble shepherd boy became a king. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and David lived his life for him. Welcome. I am Hilkiah, the storyteller, and I am here to take you back, way back, to the fabled city of Susa in ancient Persia. Susa was a mighty city, a beautiful city of white marble and blue and purple linen and gold and silver couches, where the fountains flowed in the beautiful gardens and the flowers bloomed all year long. It was one of the great cities of the world, centre of a mighty empire, which ran from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces. Susa seemed like paradise. In fact, your word paradise comes directly from that very place. And the one who ruled over it all was the mighty Xerxes, the king of kings. People trembled whenever his name was mentioned. Everyone obeyed him. Everyone except his queen. She was called Vashti one day. Xerxes summoned her. He wanted to show her off, show off her beauty to everyone. But she said, no, I'm not coming. People couldn't believe it. What can we do, they said. They said, this must never be allowed to happen again. We must find a new queen. And so they sent the messengers out to find the most beautiful young women in all the 127 provinces and bring them to Susa. One of them was called Esther. And Esther had a great secret. Esther means star in Persian, but her name wasn't really Esther. It was Hadassah. She was Jewish. She was one of God's people. But her uncle Mordecai had told her never to tell anyone who she really was. She was brought to the palace to be one of the king's concubines. They were all beautiful, but Esther was so lovely and gracious that she won everyone's heart. And Xerxes said, I want her, I want her to be my queen. So she became Queen Esther. Who could believe it? Esther, king of all Persia. What did Esther think about it? We don't know. No one asked her. No one cared what she thought. It didn't matter. And Esther had learned to keep her mouth shut. That's the kind of place it was. It wasn't really paradise. It was a place where people were scared. Where the rich ate their banquets and no one cared about the poor who starved. And everyone thought, how can I get hold of some of this power? Well, one day Mordecai, Esther's uncle, 
was sitting by the gate of the city when he heard two guards plotting to kill King Xerxes. He told Esther, she told Xerxes, and the guards were arrested and executed. And it was written down in the records of Persia that Mordecai had saved the king's life. But soon life went on and everyone forgot all about it. Instead, an evil man called Haman, an enemy of God's people, came to power. He became the second most powerful man in the empire behind only Xerxes himself. Xerxes told everyone to bow down and even kneel when Haman went past. So, of course, everyone did. Everyone except Mordecai. Mordecai's friend said, go on, what harm can it do? Just bow down, just kneel. But Mordecai said no. Unlike Esther, Mordecai had told everyone that he was one of God's people. And maybe that's why he refused to bow down to Haman. Every time Haman saw Mordecai, it made him more and more angry. Why doesn't he care? Why is he so unbothered by me? And so he decided not just to kill Mordecai, but to wipe out all of God's people right across the empire. So he arranged for the lot, the dice, to be cast to determine the day when God's people would be destroyed, so it would be written in the stars forever. The people of Israel would be destroyed. What did the mighty Emperor Xerxes think? Well, he just shrugged. He had so many different peoples across his 127 provinces. What more? What difference would it make if there was one more or one fewer? And so the order went out right across the empire to destroy the people of God on the day determined by the dice. The whole city of Susa was troubled, but no one said a word. When Mordecai heard the news, he tore his clothes, he put on sackcloth and ashes, he sat by the city gate where everyone could see him. All across the empire, God's people fasted and wept, wept and wailed. Mordecai sent a message to Esther to tell her what had happened. She didn't know. And he said, you must go to the king and beg for mercy. But Esther said, I can't go to the king unless he summons me. If I do, the penalty is death. Mordecai sent a message back. Don't think you alone will escape. If you remain silent at this time, help will arise from somewhere else. But you and all your father's family will perish. Help will arise. Mordecai had kept the faith. He knew that Xerxes didn't really rule the empire. The dice didn't really control the future. There was a higher power who ruled, and he could trust him. Think about this, he said to Esther. Maybe you've been put in this position as Queen of Persia for just such a time as this. Esther thought long and hard about her uncle's words for such a time as this. Then she knew what she must do. Get everyone together, she said. Fast and don't eat or drink for three days. And my attendants and I in the palace will do the same. And then I will go to the king even though I'm not allowed to, and if I perish, I perish. Esther knew this was the time, the time for courage, the time to act, to step out in faith. If I perish, I perish. Well, to find out what happened next, you'll have to come back next week to hear the rest of the story, but I hope this story will stay in your mind, and you'll think about it and ask questions as you think about it over the week ahead. Maybe you don't think there is a God. Maybe you think life is just about power, where the powerful do what they want and the poor suffer what they must. Is life just chance, just the throw of the dice, a trash bag of random coincidences? Or is there one unseen, hidden, who controls the world and is working for good, as Mordecai, believed. And think about times when, like Esther, 
we have to make a choice. We have to be brave when we are where we are for just such a time as this. And when we have to say with Esther, if I perish, I perish. If I lose my job, I lose my job. But I'm here for this time, and now is the time to act. I must speak up for the truth. I must stand up for justice. And think about the hope that made Esther willing to risk everything. What hope do we have? Is it just that the NHS will keep us alive a bit longer? Or is there a deeper hope, a hope for something more? Think about the true and better Esther who had not yet come when Esther lived. He didn't just risk an earthly paradise. He risked the ultimate heavenly paradise. He gave it up. He didn't just risk his life. He sacrificed his life. And he did it like Esther to save his people. If you put your hope in him, then you are rescued from the peril of death, and you can never perish. Today's reading is taken from Esther chapter 4, verses 5 to 17. Then Esther summoned Hapek, one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain it to her. And he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death, unless the king extends the golden scepter to them and spares their lives. But thirty days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you're in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position. For such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions.
God our Father, we find ourselves in difficult times when cracks in our world are beginning to show and things in which we had put our trust are tottering, making previous securities insecure. We turn to you, our faithful God, to keep us firm in our faith and grant us resilience and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world leaders, remembering particularly Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as they prepare to take on the leadership of the United States. We pray for our Queen, for the Prime Minister and the Government in these testing times that they may lead us wisely and make good decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community, for the businesses, restaurants and shops obliged to close because of the pandemic, that they may soon reopen and be restored to profitability. We pray for health workers and teachers, that they may have their strength, patience to cope with the challenging demands that they face. We pray for our church community to be kept strong in the faith and encouraged despite not being able to meet in person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for any who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, asking for healing, wholeness and comfort. And for any nearing death, peace and reassurance of God's love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining our online worship this morning. I hope uh, you've been blessed by participating in, in the worship experience uh, virtually this morning. We thank God for the news about uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. So hopefully things will return back to normal very soon. But in the meantime, shall we continue to hold the most vulnerable of our communities in our thoughts and, and our prayers in this time of uh, lockdown? We'll be on the same channel next week, uh, so join in from 10.30 uh, next, next Sunday, uh, next, next 10.30 a.m., I should say. Let us pray. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust in your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.